Welcome inside our San Francisco studios. Mike Am and Yogi Roth. We got everyone covered every single week on Pac-12 Network. You do not want to miss the show. 6 p.m. Pacific time. You and I thought it would be a good idea to dive into the North standings. Want everyone to take a look at exactly what we thought it was going to look like heading into week number five of the season. The Cal Bears, the conference's only undefeated team. The Ducks not too far behind with that 3-1 and one record. UW also sitting at 3-1. and one. Look, conference records or just overall records records aside we thought Oregon and Washington at least the preseason media poll said that those were the two teams to beat how much of a case can be made for Cal being the power right now in that division well when you look at the history of at least the college football playoff era sure the teams that have won the national championship have been the best on defense they've led the country or have been tied for the lead in sacks tackles for loss or yards per rush you look at the Cal defense right now and what they're doing it's special Mike I mean, Evan Fields, it's, it's Heisman caliber. And, and look, we're September, but this is the hype train that is college football. He's worthy of being on that. 18 tackles two weeks ago. 22 tackles against Ole Miss. Beat UW. Win of the SEC. He's willing his team with the loss of four outside linebackers, with an offense that, yeah, they came to life a little bit Saturday, but it's still not as though they look like Oregon's offense or UW's offense. So, yeah, you have to because defense, UW, They've led the Pac-12 in scoring defense the last sure. four years. They've been the most elite team. So we have to say, yeah, they're real because defense, I think, is consistent. Evan Weaver, someone crunched the numbers for me the other day, and he's on pace for, like, almost 250 tackles on the year. Like, just to put into context and perspective, that – on, that's I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's almost unthinkable for a guy to be that dominant on that side of the football. And yet, to me, there's got to be this conversation and the thought between um, who you play. And I think the argument still works in a lot of ways in favor of Cal. They got a road win in Seattle and a win in the SEC. I think Oregon is still in that conversation based off of what we saw um, all season long, but e even in the week one loss against Auburn, like they show that physically they still might be the most physical team in the entire conference, despite the fact that they have that loss. Like I, I don't know where to lean because there's still that Chris Peterson factor, young guys getting better and evolving as the season goes on. It's, it's so true, and we know what Washington State can do to anybody yeah. just in terms of putting up numbers. You know, if they don't turn the ball over, they're undefeated. I think the interesting thing with Cal is that if they've got the Oregon colors and Oregon uniforms on with being 4-0 and the wins they have, sure. they're a top eight team in the country yeah. right now. So there's a world where Cal's getting dramatically disrespected being ranked where they are. 15th which makes point. sense yeah you know uh, but because that's perception heading into the year totally uh, but I think to your point Oregon is an elite program because they have an elite quarterback I mean what Justin Herbert has done this year is really special with his receivers all being out it's not like the guys we expected or projected to play have been doing anything you know for the majority of them they've been on the bench they've been rehabbing they may not even come back so I love what this team has done defensively they're the surprise and probably the surprise of the season in terms of what Andy Avalos has done. Sure. And then you'd up, you, you nailed it. They're coming into their own. So here they go, they got SC this weekend. You look at their schedule and who they have at home, Oregon at home, Utah at home, SC of course this weekend at home. It's laid out best for them to take a run in the North. Oregon, three straight games without giving a touchdown. I think the number, don't quote me on this, is like 42 consecutive drives. That's ridiculous. I had said this to you before the season started. I didn't know if Cal was ready to win or could win the Pac-12 conference, but I thought that they would decide who ended up winning because they'd come up with some wins throughout the course of the year that you didn't necessarily expect. And maybe they got that win already with the, with the game in Seattle. How about I use the same exact phrasing and just insert a different team? Stanford. Is that the squad? I, look, at this point, I don't know if they can win uh, the Pac-12 championship based off of what we've seen. But David Shaw's team's going to get some W's here down the stretch. Yeah, you got to think that they're going to finish the season with eight wins at sure. least. I mean, it's kind of just what they always do. And the thing that's beautiful when you go to Stanford and spend time with the staff is the culture is really tight. So it's not going to be fractured, right? We saw last year Colorado be a fractured program when they just lost a bunch of games, seven straight after yeah. starting off undefeated. I think they get it right. The problem with them is injury continues to hamper this team. It did a year ago on the offensive line. It's doing it at quarterback as well. They're still trying to find the running game. And the receivers haven't made the plays like we saw. Now, I think this receiving core that they have, Mike, at this stage of their careers, they're more talented than the receivers they lost sure. last year. But they got to continue to evolve. So I look for them, to your point, to get hot. They will do exactly what you said. It might be one of the best quotes I've ever heard in terms of who will decide who in the North. So 
Props to you. I will take that. I don't hear it all that often. The conversation about the Pac-12 conference, not done with the two of us. We'll see you every Tuesday night, Pac-12 Network at 6 p.m. Pacific time.